like to have one of the model just to have like very funky hair and uh, very trendy uh, like this is extreme if you want a little bit thank you Thank you, Tony. So I just go back and say that this is like a beautiful chignon. It's so clean. It's it's amazing, uh, and I love it because it's not overly big. But if the dress is big, then the hair style has to be a bit big, just to balance the look. You can't have a massive dress and just very plain hair or hair that's pulled together like that. This chignon is stunning. It's something that I would love to have because I don't like chignon. So I'm someone. I would never in a million years do a stiff chignon like that because it doesn't, I feel, it doesn't suit my personality. I'm not that serious, okay? So I like my style to be more uh, playful and uh, feminine. Even though I love, I mean, I, I really do love this uh, chignon, but on others. Not everything that I love, I love it for me. This chignon is like princess-like, it's beautiful and even instead of the tiara, you can have it without the tiara, it will look amazing or with just the little flowers on the sides or uh, crystals on the sides, it also looks beautiful and what I love about this one, can you stand up, thank you and turn yeah, I love it that the, 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 the way it's going round at the back, it's offside, it's not like in the center and I love these pieces, it looks messy I love messy chignon. I love, love, love messy chignon. And wh whenever I see women on the red carpet, uh, I see them like, you know, the big celebrities, the uh, A-class celebrities, they always have something very messy. But all together, they look incredible. Thank you. And this one, well, I would call that like the Kim Kardashian kind of, you know, glamour. Uh, it's just super glamorous hair that is left, you know, loose, but, you know, has waves and the waves are not all uh, symmetrical. So exactly, messy waves, some are going in, some are going out, uh, just very attractive. Uh, it's a beautiful style and I love that. And this one, like we talked earlier, so yeah, it's, it suits maybe fashion shows, um, um, whenever someone wants to have anything that is a statement, this is a statement, uh, uh, this is a statement um, hairstyle. As for the makeup, if we're looking at all four models, the makeup is very different. And I believe also that the makeup should suit the person's features. So it's not like one makeup style that should be done for, for all. Um, if you close your eyes, yeah, thank you. So here we've used uh, uh, shimmery, silvery colors with uh, very strong lips. I just want to tell you, last week I had a live chat with Pat McGrath, she's the world's number one makeup artist. She's responsible for most of the shows uh, during fashion weeks, whether it's Milan, Paris, London, New York. Uh, she designs for most uh, designers. I met her three times, once uh, backstage at the Roberto Cavalli show, once at the backstage at uh, Victoria Beckham show, and just uh, a couple of months ago in Paris, backstage at the uh, Stella McCartney show and uh, we let's wait Okay, so I was just saying, when I met with, with Pat, the reason I love meeting with her, because I know what's going on in the um, trends for makeup a year in advance. So this coming summer, the latest trend, it's metallics. Metallics on the eyes, strong, strong, strong metallics. So we're talking about silver, gold, like I have now on, on my eyes, on the eyelids. So silver, gold, and even in color, like bright, strong, metallic blue, metallic uh, uh, maybe green, uh, metallic burgundy. So very strong uh, metallic colors as far as the eyes. Also a lot of shimmer on, on the cheeks, on the face, and very strong lips. 
So strong lips are also uh, really in. And what I mean about strong lips, like strong, like your color, and they're like strong pop lips. You can just like spot the lips before anything else. And usually with makeup, the trend is one or the other. But now, this coming summer, it's both together. So it's actually quite acceptable to have strong eyes and a strong lip color. So as we can see, this is a more like a traditional smoky Arabian eyes, uh, where the entire eyelid, eyelid is covered in, in black with um, natural looking eyelashes. The brows, the eyebrows have been just groomed uh, naturally. And under the eyebrow, the color is not shimmery. So it gives uh, the eye look, that smoky look, without it looking like it's a party look. This is a beautiful makeup. I love this one because it's very natural. Chin off a little bit. Yeah, thank you. I love her natural eyebrows, actually. We can talk more about the eyebrows later on, if you like. Uh, eyebrows are so in right now. I was on television yesterday morning on uh, Sabah Al Arabiya, and we were talking about my eyebrow surgery. I had uh, eyebrow surgery. I had a tra hair transplant taken from the back of my head and implanted into my eyebrows. I had 700 hairs uh, implanted in my eyebrows, and I can't tell you how much I love my eyebrows. Like, I love them so much. It's the nicest thing that I've done uh, recently. Uh, but I wish, I mean, I had really thick eyebrows, but I wasn't even born with thick eyebrows. So I was born with thin to medium eyebrows. And unfortunately, and you know, it was so fashionable to have them super thin. And I did that and they never grew back. So, uh, but luckily now there is a solution for thicker brows. And this is why we see most of the models on stage, their brows are either medium thick or quite thick. But we can talk later on who it suits and who it doesn't suit to have straight eyebrows or very, very thick eyebrows. But for me, if you look at the eyebrows, they don't stand out. I see sometimes people when they get their makeup done and the eyebrow is like, it's been done by, with a ruler. It's so straight and the edges are so square and the color is so dark. They shouldn't look like stickers on your face. They literally look like you can just pop them on and off and they shouldn't look like that. So eyebrows should be groomed and spaces should be filled in, but we shouldn't go overboard with the eyebrows. So this look, I, I love that look because it looks so natural. If we let the chignon down and we remove the, the, you know, the beautiful earrings and she has a, an outfit for work, this can actually be a look that people can go to you know, smart business meetings uh, and then continue to go out in the evening with their friends for, for some sushi or some Lebanese food or whatever you, you fancy, just adding a, a strong lipstick on. So if we look at this makeup like that, the eyes look stunning, and when we add the makeup, it looks suddenly more glamorous. So this is a, a, a very nice eye makeup look that can actually pass for both. But this makeup look, even if you remove the lips, the, the eyes are still too strong. So this is how we see a makeup, how it could be transformed from day to night. This is the perfect day to night makeup. With the last one, I love this, this look because it's so funky and it's individual. Um, I love the tiara. Uh, this tiara could also be like a, a diamond necklace or it could have uh, little flowers all around or little studs all around, whatever you fancy. And the makeup is super, super, super natural. Uh, we could, with such a hairstyle, depending on why we're doing such a, like a, uh, a funky hairstyle, we could also go super funky with the makeup or no makeup at all, like literally no makeup at all. We will have like just bare minimum foundation, bare minimum concealer, bare minimum uh, eyelashes and lips will just imitate the natural color of the lips and that would also look stunning because then all the attention all the attention would go on the hair. I just want to tell you, when I was in Paris for the Stella McCartney fashion show, I mean, all the models are like, the, the oldest one was probably 20 years old. So from 16, 17 to 20. And I was interviewing Pat, and Pat was explaining uh, what the makeup was on one of the models. The model was so stunning. I mean, I'm sure she just woke up looking the same. I'm sure she, they should have just said to the models, wake up, have a shower, brush your teeth, you know, put some vlog on and just come to the show. Because the models didn't look like they had anything on, even close up. 
And when I asked Pat, like, what was done on the models, she said Stella asked for the models to look like the way they to look on stage like they were born. That, that way. So there was minimal, minimal, minimal uh, mascara. When the mascara was added with also a dry brush, the mascara was again removed. So very minimal. The foundation wasn't even applied on, on the entire face, only on certain, you know, if you had a bit of discoloration or whatever. Uh, no concealer at all. Uh, eyeshadow was just matte and the same color skin color and the lips were just a bit of uh, almost not pink because if I say pink you'd imagine pink but almost like lip color nude uh, uh, lip, uh, lip gloss and they looked amazing uh, so what I want to say sometimes is I love makeup that looks like makeup and looks glamorous but also sometimes I like the art of makeup when you make someone look amazing without seeing the amount of makeup that is, is on the face. Uh, what I also want to say is that the trend, fine with trends, maybe some trends don't work for everyone, so you should really see what really works for you when it comes to hair and makeup and hair colors. A lot of people ask me all the time, Joel, what is the latest trend? It's nice to know what is the latest trend, but it's not necessarily you need to follow the latest trends, because it's, it's not for all. Uh, trends are made to actually suit uh, what is coming out on the market as far as clothes but it doesn't have to be what you need to actually how you need to change your makeup if we look at if we look at contouring contouring is a big thing right now but I just want to tell you it's not anything new contouring is what any makeup artist learns as a basic when you learn makeup artistry because you can't just apply foundation on the entire face and leave it all looking one color so the very first thing we learn is contouring but because people really love makeup and women want to actually look like they, they leave the house looking like they've got a professional makeup on and because of Kim Kardashian and her reality show and she has a makeup artist coming to her house every morning doing her lashes and her contouring and making her look blemish free women think that's how we need to look like every day so I just tell you, even though I'm a celebrity, I do leave the house without makeup. I do put my pictures on Instagram and WhatsApp without makeup and Snapchat. Um, and I'm fine with that. Actually, I, I've learned to really love my skin. I really learned to love the person that looks at me in the mirror uh, in the morning, first thing in the morning and last thing at night. My husband likes me without makeup much more than, than this. But sometimes I play a role of, you know, glamorous, uh, business-like, uh, depends what I have to do on the show, depends the age of the contestant who's with me, what she's wearing, what I'm wearing. And sometimes I wear makeup for my followers because I know they, they like makeup so much. So I, I, I do different types of makeup just for them. But even though I'm a makeup artist, I actually, I love to encourage women to really look after their skin. And it's really important to feel confident and once you have that confidence to leave the house without makeup, I can't tell you the happiness it gives you and the confidence, the added confidence that you gain from doing that. But it doesn't mean that if you don't have great skin, you just you know, start going out without makeup because you're going to feel depressed. You'll get a glimpse of yourself without makeup. Oh my God, I don't look good. No, enjoy looking good without makeup. Everyone looks good without makeup, trust me. Uh, I'm going to now take questions from the audience because I think I'm done here. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you very, very much. By the way, for the next uh, few days, the entire team from Maison de Joël, Clinique Joël and Joël Paris is going to be on the stand. So feel free to come and ask them any advice you like about skin, hair, beauty, treatments. Okay, so who has a question for me? Ah, lots of questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, Joel. I just have one question regarding the smiling lines. Uh, once I apply makeup, uh, especially in the parties, I put like I mean more layer than what I do every day. But then uh, in the middle of the party, I, I find some smiling lines, and it's very obvious. So how we can avoid it while applying the makeup? Hi, how are you? But you don't have big groups. So the question was that when she smiles at the end of a party, she finds that she has like uh, these lines coming down from either side of the face. I think change your foundation. 
or uh, just a question for you do you hydrate your face before you put uh, foundation not always so always use uh, a moisturizer a very very light moisturizer I'll tell you a secret uh, I, this is from training days, this is from years and years and years ago. We always prep the face with a very light moisturizer, okay? So, in, in Joan Paris, we have something called Rescue Me. It's super light, it's almost transparent, it's perfect as a base under makeup. But what's even better, something I discovered actually when I had my, my line of uh, skincare, is that when I have studio, and I'm doing my makeup at 10 in the morning, and I come back home at 1 in the morning the next day, and I'm doing three episodes in a row, and I'm under strong, strong, heavy lights, I discovered that when I use the Good Night Cream, which is a very thick-based uh, cream, my makeup stays super fresh, like all day. So um, it, it acts as a barrier between my skin and the makeup. And it keeps my skin hydrated all day, so you, I don't end up having any lines. So one, try to moisturize, come and visit us and try the Rescue Me. I'm, I'm not sure you will need the Good Night Cream under makeup, but it's great for night time. It's a beautiful, um, nourishing cream. This is the Rescue Me. This is the Rescue Me. It's super, super light, uh, intensive hydrating cream. By the way, I'll just talk to you, just before I take more questions, I'll talk to you about my skincare line, which I adore. Uh, like I said, I am, even though I'm a makeup artist, I didn't really want to actually produce makeup. I wanted to produce skincare because I knew that women in the region don't use skincare. And this is something that really bothers me. And I treat my audience, my fans, like my sisters and my friends and, you know, people that I really care about. Uh, and everything that I do, I actually share it on my show. So I, when I do, did Botox, I shared that on my show. When I put my extensions in, I share that on my show. You know, I like to, to be very transparent. So six years ago, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I decided that I wanted to actually produce a skincare line because I found out that women in the region only spend 10% from their uh, beauty budget on skincare. In Europe, I used to live in London for 14 years of my life, it's the other way around. It's more like 70% is spent on skincare, then a lot less on, on perfume and makeup. So I really want to start that trend that women really enjoy uh, uh, taking care of their skin. So I, I created five products that are, give me five, five easy steps to perfect skin. So we start with my hero product. This is our hero product. You know when, when I um, produced them, it took me four years to launch. Four years of testing different products, deciding you know what to launch, what to produce, uh, which skin type, uh, what reason. So I wanted at the beginning the five products to be for all skin types and all age groups. It was about cleansing, hydrating and protection. So the cleansing, this is the Hero Mousse, it's a very, very lightweight mousse. You can wash away your entire makeup, everything, it's non-drying. And all the uh, beauty bloggers, all the uh, beauty editors, uh, celebrities, they write about this on their Insta all the time, uh, praising the product. So this is a very nice uh, cleansing mousse. <laughs> then you have Rescue Me. Rescue Me, like we talked, it's a very light uh, moisturizer. It's great under makeup for every day. And then you have the Good, Night, Good Day Cream. The Good Day Cream, I just want to tell you, my skin doesn't look like this. My skin is very pale, so I cheat because my body is dark, but my face is super white. Because it's been 11 years now, I never, ever, 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 ever put my face in the sun. So even if I'm going out to the sea or to the beach, um, 50 protection, and then I put a cap or I try to stay in the shade. Uh, so my face is super white. I, I also put a lot of pictures on, on my own Instagram where, yeah, without makeup at the end of the day, putting these patches which I'm actually trying to produce also for the eyes, eye masks, and you can see the color of my face is, is totally white. So all I want to say, it's really important. I, by the way, I just turned 40 last week and I'm very super proud of that. Thank you. So. I think women can look beautiful at any age, whether you're in your teenage years, you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, every age has its beauty, but we also all want to age gracefully. 
So I really have that strong passion for my skincare line and I want to help women look great.